It all began innocently enough in an English schoolyard in early 2018. However, the situation took a dark turn when Freddie Webster, a student from Yorkshire in the north of England, started experiencing excruciating stomach pains. Concerned, his mother hurried her 12-year-old son to the emergency room, where an X-ray uncovered the alarming cause. Items that Freddie had accidentally ingested were tearing a life-threatening hole in the young boy's stomach lining. A novel craze had swept through schools in the northern regions of England, involving tiny magnetic spheres that resembled ball bearings in size, and were marketed as bridge and whiteboard magnets. Despite their minuscule dimensions, approximately a tenth of an inch in diameter, these magnets possessed astonishing strength. Just two of them could easily attract to each other through human skin, leading children in England to use them as novelties, often mimicking ear, nose, or facial piercings with pairs of these tiny magnets. On a fateful Tuesday, January 30, 2018, Freddie decided to test their magnetic power himself. He placed one of these spherical magnets inside his mouth and another on the outside. As expected, the magnets displayed a strong magnetic attraction through the skin of his cheek. However, in a moment of curiosity, Freddy accidentally swallowed the pair of magnets. At the time, the Driftfield School student in East Yorkshire didn't think much of swallowing these small magnets. In fact, he didn't worry when two more magnets slipped into his digestive system later that day. It wasn't until late the following afternoon that Freddy mentioned to his mother, Sarah, that he had swallowed two of these magnets. At that moment, neither of them believed that these tiny metal balls would cause significant issues. Unfortunately, they were both mistaken. By Wednesday night, Freddie began experiencing stomach pains just one day after ingesting the tiny novelty magnets. Sarah had assumed that the magnets would pass harmlessly through her son's system, but they didn't. The pain in Freddie's abdomen persisted and intensified. During the night, from Thursday into Friday, the pain became so severe that Freddy couldn't sleep. When he informed his mother the following morning, Sarah grew increasingly concerned for her son's well-being. She reached out for professional advice, and in an interview with the UK tabloid The Daily Mail in February, Sarah recounted, I called the doctor on Friday morning and told them about the swallowed magnets. At the time, she still underestimated the seriousness of the situation. As Sarah continued, the doctor asked how many he had swallowed, and that's when Freddie told me it was four. For Freddie, this meant double trouble, and it multiplied his mother's worries, particularly when she heard the doctor's recommendation. Freddie had ingested the first two magnets during recess on Tuesday, accidentally swallowing the second pair just five hours later completely unaware of the impending danger. This meant that the foreign objects had been inside his system for two and a half days, and it was now imperative to act swiftly. Following the doctor's advice, Sarah rushed her son to the emergency room at Hall Royal Infirmary nearby. An X-ray conducted at the hospital revealed the eerie sight of the four ball-bearing-sized magnets neatly aligned in Freddie's stomach. Although it might have appeared unusual to the medical staff, it was far from an unfamiliar sight. Sarah soon learned that her son was not the first patient in East Yorkshire to be admitted to the hospital under such circumstances. In fact, Freddie was the fourth patient that Marcin Kazmierski, a pediatric consultant in the region, had seen in as many months, all involving boys of similar ages as Freddie. None of them were aware of the dangers posed by the ingestion of these tiny magnets. In Kazmierski's words, the act of swallowing these magnets was potentially fatal. It became apparent that children in Northern England had been treating these minuscule magnets as playthings, oblivious to the grave harm they could inflict. The magnetic force of these tiny spheres remained just as potent when swallowed, and if multiple magnets were ingested, their magnetic attraction could cause significant damage to the delicate tissues inside the body. The soft tissues within the human body are thin and highly susceptible to damage from foreign objects. The ball-bearing-sized magnetic metal spheres could easily breach the lining of the digestive system as they were drawn together. Such damage had the potential to result in internal bleeding, which, if left untreated, 
could lead to blood poisoning, both life-threatening conditions. Unfortunately, this was precisely what had occurred with Freddy and the quartet of intrusive magnets he had ingested. The magnetic pull of these four magnets lodged in his stomach had caused them to tear through the stomach lining, resulting in severe damage to his small bowel. As these objects showed little sign of passing through the schoolboy system on their own, surgery was the only viable solution. Consequently, Dr. Kazmierski opted for surgery the following day. Despite the life-threatening nature of the situation, the pediatric consultant noted that his patient appeared to be in relatively good health. Remarkably, Freddy could even walk to the operating theater unassisted from his hospital bed. For Freddy's anxious mother, Sarah, all she could do was wait outside the operating room on that Saturday morning, her concerns mounting with each passing hour. Sarah had never been in such a situation before, and the uncertainty weighed heavily on her. What would the specialist discover during the surgery? How serious was the damage inflicted by the magnets inside her son? The answers emerged when Dr. Kazmierski emerged from the theater after a four and a half hour operation. Freddy's condition was stable, but he remained seriously ill. He had lost nearly four inches of his bowel during the procedure. Dr. Kazmierski informed Sarah that the next 24 hours would be critical, but he also reassured her that her son was resilient. Reflecting on the situation, Sarah later shared. Kazmierski said as a medical professional, he could not believe that Freddy had not been in more pain. Pain, however, was not at the forefront of the young boy's mind when his mother finally saw him in the recovery ward following the operation. As Sarah recounted, when I saw him in recovery, he was connected to various monitors and Freddy, despite his oxygen mask, managed to ask, what about skiing? Because he had a school skiing trip scheduled for March. Sarah, on the other hand, had more pressing concerns. Shortly after the surgery, she contacted her son's school to urge them to alert other parents about the dangers of these novelty items. In fact, these miniature fridge and whiteboard magnets are already banned in the United States. Following Freddy's incident, Driftfield School swiftly implemented its own ban and informed the parents of other involved boys. Sarah welcomed this move and believed that parents should be made aware of the danger. As she expressed to the Daily Mail, I firmly believe they should be banned, just like in America. These magnets are exceptionally powerful and come in various colors which naturally attract children. Freddy was discharged from the hospital shortly after the operation, returning to school for morning classes only. He followed a low-fiber, low-fat diet, avoiding foods that could irritate or harm his delicate system. While his recovery was progressing well, Freddy was informed that the effects of the incident would stay with him for life. Given his experience, it's no surprise that Freddy now has a serious perspective on what he once considered harmless schoolyard fun. He stated, I believe these magnets should be banned worldwide. I know many people who have them and put them in their mouths, noses, and even their eyelids. I was genuinely worried about other children in school and whether any of them might have swallowed these magnets.